Welcome to another episode of Artist Spotlight the Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Stringer. This episode, I'm joined by Baltimore Oriole team photographer, Todd Olszewski, who I've known for many, many years and uh, a real talented guy and just, just generous with his time. And I appreciated him making the time to spend with me and talk about his origins, how he got started with the Baltimore Orioles and how his work has evolved. You know, years ago... The job of a sports team photographer was to create images that would be used for promotions and and other marketing efforts and just on an as needed basis. And Todd's career with the Orioles and in Major League Baseball has extended not only from that context, but today so much of the marketing and promotion is around social media. In fact, the Orioles, like all the Major League teams, and, and for that matter, most professional sports teams, have entire media departments that are involved in shooting in-game video, pre-game video, and then getting those images and that video out in almost real time through the various social media platforms. So the the game has changed in a literal and a figurative sense. And Todd has uh, ridden that change and he's accepted it and he's playing a major role in that and just a very creative guy. And I was glad to, to have the time with him. As always, the podcast is brought to you by the Maryland Photography Alliance. You can check out everything they have going on at mdphotoalliance.org. Lots of good information, contests, upcoming events. So a wealth of information that I invite you to uh, jump online and, and check out. And without further ado, I hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy my talk with Todd Olszewski. It's great to, to get together with you. Thanks for being on the podcast. Well, Mitch, thanks for, uh, you know, reaching out and asking me to come have a little chat with you. So this year has been for you, I would imagine, a little bit different than going back, uh, you know, six, seven, eight years. You've been uh, really, really busy up until just a couple of weeks ago. How's it been going through this uh, AL East championship run this year with the Orioles? You know, it's uh, it's one of those that, you know, going into spring training, like every team is kind of like, you know, how are they going to be? And, uh, you know, we know we kind of knew the guys we have and they're a good group of guys. And uh, it just was neat to see how the season progressed and that, you know, they just kept winning series and then won some more. And, you know, uh, by the end of it, they just, you know, they they held on to the first place in the east and uh ended up winning it so it, it's nice because it was the you know second time since i've been with the club that you know i've been able to witness and cover that and uh you know it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh just just a cool moment you know not just for the team but you know the city and you know it's just it's a cool moment to capture now, with you being the team photographer and with technology evolving as it as it uh, as it has, you know, you and I have known each other for it, it's got to be more than fifteen years. How long? What year were you named the photographer, the team photographer for the Orioles? So I uh, took over from Jerry Walker, who uh, was a team photographer previously. Uh, I interned with him, worked part time. Uh, he passed away from cancer and I kind of just filled in uh, and then I got offered the job uh, full time in 2006. So, uh, but I've been with the club working since 2002. And and in in that time, you know, what would you say have been the biggest changes in the role of team photographer and then sort of, um, you know, with the advent or the growth of social media? How has that changed your, you know, your game to game workload and just kind of what you're involved with overall? Yeah, I think the, well, you know, the the biggest change is uh, not shooting film and having to drop it off at the uh, <laughs> lab uh, after the game and uh, waiting a few days to get it back. Uh, but really, like the biggest thing, I think it's with you know, there's a lot of fields where this this you know the evolution of just technology really kind of 
changed how you have to do things. And that's, you know, we had digital cameras before there were there was social media that you had to be concerned about. So it it sort of it was kind of twofold. You had that where you had more of an immediacy of people like, oh, we can have stuff faster than we used to, which was, you know, it was a change in workflow of like, you know, learning how to manage a digital archive opposed to a physical one. Uh, and then with the birth of social media, even that like kind of was stages. It was like, here's this thing that's happening. Uh, I guess we're going to start partaking in like, you know, I remember when we were like, oh, we're going to start an Instagram because this is a thing now. And it was, it was a very more of just like, no one really knew what to do at that point where now it's, you know, there's so much data and analytics and all of that behind it to kind of show what works, what doesn't that, you know, now it's, it's become each platform is sort of a, another voice for the team in order to engage with fans and each fan has different ways. Like, you know, there's, we do different things on Facebook or Instagram and all of that. So it's, as the game goes along, we've, we've had to change how we shoot, how we, you know, because if something happens in the game, you want that to then go onto social media. So we had to work out processes on how, how do you do that? Then getting it from the camera to them, to, up and usable in a timely fashion so like it that's you know it seems like it's been quick but it hasn't and it's been stages but i think in the past few years there's it's you, you almost blink and another social media uh platform has been invented now yeah no you're, you're right I'm, I'm always fascinated you know if you and i are out of the ballpark and we're shooting a game and, and somebody hits a home run and they're greeted at home plate by a few of the teammates it's literally minutes before uh, images from that home run and that trot around the bases shows up on Instagram. And, you know, it used to be when you and I grew up, you would see that image and you would see it that next morning in your newspaper. You know, you, yep. you didn't see it four minutes later, you know, while maybe the inning is even still going on. It's, it's do you feel like that's put um, additional demands on what you and, and the, the group do? I mean, or is it, is it sort of more, um, in a way fulfilling because you're seeing more of your work being published. Um, it could be digitally, but you, more of your work is getting out there. So how do you kind of look at that uh, additional, you know, means of communication and, and showing what the team's doing? Oh, uh, I, th I think with some of it, it's uh, almost a part of life now in general, not even just like for work. It's like, you know, it's, you're sort of that immediacy is everywhere. And so it's, I think it's it's definitely neat because the way that we can take advantage of the technology and the camera, you know, using FTPs, they can grab stuff like all the different apps, everything to make it that it's as streamlined of a workflow as possible. But I mean, you know, it, when it was everything was print based or it was like billboards or very, you know, the amount of images that actually got used was you know, I, I I don't even want to put a percentage on it, but it was more stuff just never saw the light of day where this in this day and age, it's like you have a, you know, we get a cool angle or like just a really interesting moment and things that maybe wouldn't have gotten used before being seen. Uh, you know, like we have a photo blog that we can kind of put a little bit more out there than like might work on like the main uh teams platforms just because it's you know just a, a different look and we can put more out there so it's it's definitely a better i think it's a better process of being able to have more images see the light of day it just you know it's not that there's more pressure or anything for anyone to to like keep up with it and we have like it's not like someone's there with a stopwatch uh, making sure we've gotten it out uh, as quick as possible, but like, you know, kind of pride ourselves on that. And uh, it definitely is, it's, you know, you see more and I, you see more too, just from everyone around the league too, which is just, you know, it's, it's things that you would never have seen in the past, which I think is a, you know, to look at, keep a perspective on it is that's, you know, that's definitely a positive to everything has changed. It's just, you know, everyone wants everything immediately uh, in this day and age, whether it's, 
with work or even home or school or things with your kids like so it's uh you know you kind of just get used to that as uh that's how how things have changed sort of like the good old days where you know when you were a kid and you you wanted or needed something you you had to get mom or dad to take you there and then when their schedule allowed you went and you know you bought it nowadays you you literally click a button and it can be at your house by six o'clock that night so it's just yeah everything has changed. Well, before we get too far down the road in terms of, you know, what you've done and what you what you do now day in day out, I want to kind of take a step back because I'm sure that a lot of people listening are, you know, listening and and seeing a lot of your images on the website and the other media platforms that the Orioles have and they're asking themselves regardless of age, they're saying you know, how did, how did Todd, you know, come to do this, you know, or, or how can I do that? You know, not necessarily with a major league team, it could be a minor league team or it could be something else. So, um, you know, what, what from an origin standpoint, you know, with schooling or interest growing up, you know, sort of piqued your interest in photography. When was that first time you, you picked up a camera, you know, with some intention to, to make a picture? Yeah. So, growing up my dad did it as like just a hobby like and his big thing is like he liked going out you know big nature guy so he went out just went on hikes did stuff and so like you got to the point where you're old enough and you just kind of tagged along and i saw what he was doing and i was like okay this is interesting uh and then but my high school actually they had a photo class and then it kind of like went away and came back and then finally my senior year i was able to take it take that where you know we it was we had to build the dark room because that's it was not something that uh existed anymore and so that was kind of where I got the you know I guess you could say photo bug where I was like all right this is this is something that I feel like I am decent at and I'm you know sort of understand the technical side of it that like maybe I could do something with this and then I uh ended up going to uh Catonsville Community College and uh just did their photo program uh did graphic design and photo and uh really that's that kind of was like where the whole Orioles thing happened was because I was there my freshman year and my cousin who was an athletic trainer or wanted to be an athletic trainer got an internship with the trainers at the Orioles and okay. so he just started talking to uh everyone and asked the photographer at the time Jerry of like hey how did you have interns how does this same thing like basically the question you just asked he asked Jerry and was like he's like well I have two people leaving so have him send me his portfolio and so I reached out and it just you know it was sort of someone in the right place at the right time that asked the right question and uh you know, at that point, like I literally, I shot maybe one high school sports game. Most of my stuff was, you know, just landscape, you know, lifestyle type things. And uh, then I got the internship and I interned for six months and then uh, got hired, worked part time for from basically 2003 to 2006. And then uh, was full time, have been full time since. Um, uh, so like to, to the second part of that is like, how does someone get to this position? It's the thing that's wild these days. And we talk about it in our group here at, uh, our creative group at the Orioles is that, you know, not just on the major league level has the way that teams cover and the impact that photo and video and social has, like it's in college now too some college programs have have more people on staff than we do uh and so it's it's one of those that it's just starting early if it's something that they're interested in like you know the the amount of people i know that do photography that are self-taught they didn't go to school for it it's it's one of those uh few p professions that i think you can you know go, yeah, going to school and getting that expertise is definitely uh an advantage but it, it's something that you just have to go out and do it and then the opportunities that are, present themselves at college like that's the that's where it's just you know if you want to do it just get out to try to you know photograph as much as you can and 
the other biggest thing is too is like you know i think this is in life in general is it's it's also about figuring out what you like and don't like so try to cover a little bit of everything you know uh you know that's the one thing that's nice here is that you know everyone thinks of baseball games that's what we do but you know we have community events corporate events we've got photo shoots all different range of things that we have to to cover here uh and photograph and it, that that's what kind of I guess keeps it fresh because it's always something new well you know having worked with you for so many years and meeting so many of the interns you know folks have gone on to really you know impressive photography careers and I'm sure that you know others have gone on to you know other other paths as well and it's a credit to you for identifying people who uh, who not only want to do the internships but who have the work ethic and and the uh the desire to to be out there doing it and you know I I see you know, now that I'm an old guy, I say, you know, I see the, the young people, but I see younger people who are just a year or so out of college and they're out there, you know, with you working at your direction, you know, really being creative, whether it's the angles that they're standing at to get pictures or, you know, just the enthusiasm that they have for what they're doing and for the opportunity that you and the team have given them. It's, you know, it's clear that you create a very welcoming um, environment. You know, it's it's high pressure when it needs to be, but it's very obvious that they're enjoying what they're doing and they're working hard. So that's definitely a credit to, you know, you all who are interviewing them and then making the choices as to who, you know, is going to become a part of the team. You know, I guess um, how, you know, what are some of the attributes that you're looking for, you know, with interns and with hires, um, just, what kind of mindset, uh, you know, of, of people? Um, I think that that's important because it seems like you're making some great choices. Yeah. So uh, the biggest thing, like where I want to start with it is that, you know, I had someone take a ch chance on me, you know, granted at this point, it was a long time ago, but they took a chance on me. And so I think it's, it's sort of my duty besides what I have to do here for my job is to also pay that forward however I can. And whether that's with interns or assistants or however, uh, because, you know, this is one of those things that you're constantly, you know, it's a field that things are changing, technology changes, how you have to do things changes. So uh, that plays a lot into what we're looking for. Like, I mean, I always joke around that, like, if when we get interns, like, we'll have people that send in like, oh, it's a baseball team. So I'm going to send in baseball images. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not impressed by a baseball image because I've seen them all we've seen them a thousand times uh i mean there's moments that you see that you're like okay this is that's a good frame but uh i just want to see that like they know how to use a camera and do they have a little bit of an eye that okay with a little guidance that they'll they'll start to understand of why you do things a little differently or why you know settings change that kind of thing you know that's there's a lot that can be taught on in terms of just like the technical side and just how to look for things and how to to approach it. But I think the bigger thing too is just finding people that are passionate about it for the right reasons mm -hmm. and that want to be they want to just be a very good photographer. They want to be uh they but they don't want to just there's a lot of uh you, you just don't want like egos you want people who are going to just embrace okay i'm here to learn in terms of that internship and because that was the thing is like i was a sponge when i did it uh asked every question possible to everyone possible uh you know and had the opportunity to work besides a lot of people that you know have gone on to do a lot of really interesting things and it's you, that's the bigger thing is you just never know who you're talking to or who you might have the opportunity to talk to along with having these roles and so it's having so you know having someone that's open to be like okay i i want to learn as much as possible because that's the biggest thing is it's that's the the whole goal of an internship is to pass as much knowledge on so that this person then can then move on to the you know the next chapter of their life of okay, uh, you know, I've now got a, a a job and like, what can I take from what I learned? Uh, and so like, that's just an openness to want to learn and just, I wouldn't say like they need to fit in a team or like a group that we have because everyone needs to be their own individual. 
uh but they just have to be you know that willingness to learn and you know some some basic knowledge of using a camera is you know pretty important. helpful so when when you were hired on and then uh jerry jerry walker was the team photographer and then then jerry passed and then you sort of uh evolved into that role as team photographer how much of what you did decisions you made in that first six months or a year was you sort of uh taking what you learned under jerry and kind of just continuing that on or when did you along that way realize i have some maybe some different ideas so i don't have to do things exactly the way jerry did jerry was fantastic but i can do some things a little different and chart a little different direction because you know i, I i'm not putting this on you but i would imagine that when that happened and that transition happened it's like holy cow i'm the guy now like there's a certain i mean you knew what to do but you were now the guy instead of being, you know, there with Jerry. So how, how did you just emotionally, mentally, and then like day to day navigate that I'm the guy now and just kind of walking that walk now that you were the person making those decisions, how you felt it was best to do? You know, I think the the biggest thing is the, the you know, I kind of look at how we had approached stuff because back then too, it was... A lot of what you did was more capturing for, for historical purposes slash really, it, you know, there's things that were used during the year and that, but a lot of it was building towards all the marketing needs for the next season, where the way that things, you know, when I took over and it started to being, you know, there's more digital and, you know, to now is that those needs now are happening in season and so like it's just approaching it like how it was less of like okay these are my ideas now how to do it is more of a okay this is how we can now that the times are changing also what can i do that with the knowledge i have for on the technical side of not just camera and that but just you know managing an archive or those types of things like how can i put that into place that it, it was it worked better for other people too and so it wasn't even some of it wasn't even just on field stuff you know and like capturing but like the biggest thing was just that we had it was a a lot of how we originally started shooting was just like it, you've it was very like a stock agency because that's what everyone needed and it started to shift it was like okay i can start shooting how i want to shoot and it still works for what everyone else needs and then that helps you then because you're capturing images that you like and that's what then can then be used for things but it's also just it's not you know there's a little bit more creativity there so it was just like i think it just kind of like again right time uh right place right time kind of thing of that transition was happening everywhere in the world and it just happened around the same time that I you know ended up taking over you know something that that has affected me as a photographer is I find that sometimes if I'm shooting something other than sports like if I'm shooting um, people and cultures you know and it could be some somewhere else in the world but you know you start seeing light and shapes and people's angles of their faces and 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 balancing compositions and then I come back home and i'm shooting an oriole game but even though i'm looking at a dugout i'm starting to see in the players faces or the way their bodies are positioned like a like almost like a, a composition that reminds me of that same kind of thing i saw you know a month earlier in you know in india or something so for me one type of photography can sometimes inform a different type of photography I, i'm learning from one type and i'm bringing it into another do you have those kind of things where, you know, doing one type of photography has kind of, you know, either opened your eyes to things you can put to use when you're shooting sports? Have you had any of those kind of moments or something similar to that? Uh, you know, I think, I think it's more of just, you know, to start, it was a lot of, okay, let me make sure I can cover a baseball game, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then right. you start to see, you know, how can I frame this and how am I still capturing a baseball game, but making it, uh, 
a unique angle but yeah like uh, you know to the point of honestly other other than a few uh things freelance things on the side like i usually take a lot of time of not shooting when i'm not working exactly. and so you know uh, unlike a lot of people who kind of dabble in a lot of other things i take i i kind of separate like when it's my free time like i'm doing other other things so i'm not shooting as much uh of a variety and so that's that's why it's a little bit harder for me to say like, oh yeah this is a big example of where but it's just you i think it's it's more of just as you're as i'm photographing a game it's just more of looking like okay there's a picture there's all these other positions but what can i do to either move or play with the light in order to change how this is uh portrayed you know through the camera and through the images and then that people can see and like how it's you know again it's you're trying to recreate the wheel every night basically because it's a it's a baseball game there's going to be hits there's going to be strikes there's going to be double plays uh so how how can you position yourself and that's where i look at it is more of it's less about what's in the middle of the frame and everything else around it you know you, that's that's a really really important point i think that you bring up for a lot of people who are listening so you know when when you go and it could it could apply outside of going to a ball game so when you're at, at a ball game, you know, there's action that presents itself. There's a pitcher who has the ball, every pitch, obviously. There's a batter who's awaiting that pitch. So those are fairly obvious uh, points of subject matter. But one of the things that I always has found so impressive with you, you and I may be at the same game, but I'll see photos you've made and you're really leveraging the way the sun is setting on the facade of the stadium or, or from the inside of the stadium. And you're showing how incredible that sunset looks and the colors of it and the actual structure of the stadium is, is either in or almost in shadow. And it, you're, you're looking at the game, but you're looking at everything around the game or much of it around the game. So there's all these different sources of subject matter more than just he throws the pitch, he either hits the ball or he doesn't. And I think that photographers, every photographer can learn something, you know, when they're in a place where the subject seems fairly obvious to look around their environment for the less than obvious subjects, you know, whether it's the sunset or whether it is, you know, a, a cute little kid who has popcorn all over his face, or it's, you know, a, a grown man who's dressed like Babe Ruth, or, you know, it's, uh, a player who is tapping his his cleats and you see a puff of chalk or dirt come off of the cleats. It's like there's big moments and little moments, which I imagine when you're shooting 81 home games, um, you know, you can't just shoot the pitcher and the catcher and the guy fielding the ball. You know, wh where does your mind go when you're you've got the shot you need? Where does your mind go in between pitches or if someone else has that primary responsibility of shooting the play in that moment, where, where, where is that thought that comes across you to kind of look at the other smaller moments that could be occurring at, at the ballpark? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think the, the, the biggest thing is those, you know, I kind of refer to them as like the quiet moments. Like what is the, what is something that's sort of happening away from the action? uh you know and you know how to to where we have to shoot the game from like you know you're sort of limited you only have so many one field spots so it's moving around to those different spots and take advantage of those different angles to what gets you in the best position to also see those but it's also to know that like okay you know some of the best uh sort of moments from the season aren't the the guy actually hitting the pitch it's what happens after so it's continuing to shoot through the play because you never know what's going to happen but always being ready that you know you never know what's going to be happening and so it's you know it, you know they're unlike you know say football like there's some natural breaks uh within the game of baseball where it's you know in between innings you're like you'll look around to see you know 
for fans and there's other moments that will stand out and be needed uh you know whether it's marketing or just you know just cool moments of you know that could be used on social so it's it's just thinking like okay you know and some of that too is all based off of you know it depends on how the game's going if it's a very close game you know you're really more tied in and to every pitch and every at bat but if it's you know one team's up one way or the other like that can also help dictate that you're like okay well you know if we're up by a lot of runs it's like okay well this next run that we score isn't like the most crucial thing to get too social right away to because it's a game-changing thing so it's like that's when you can take advantage of those moments to look around to see what else is happening you know uh but that's the that's the big thing is like you know in a lot of those quiet moments like it's more of in that pre-game sort of ritual of like guys coming out uh them preparing for the game like where do you see those those sort of getting ready you know because in game it's a little tough uh with just the positioning and where the dugout is and how many people there are and so it's taking advantage of like that's when uh like pre-game you you get like a half hour of where you can get a little bit more creative with it yeah no that that makes that makes sense so now i'm going to invite you to what i would call photo nerd corner where okay. many people listening they're going to listen. They're going to absolutely love all the insights you're sharing. And the question that's going to be in the front of their mind is what kind of lens does, his, uh, does he use? Well, you know, how many cameras does he have? So, you know, nowadays all the brand, all the camera brands are great. I mean, you know, it's just really what preference you have, but they are going to ask what lenses do you use to shoot a major league game? So I, I present you with that question. Perfect. Well, that's uh, that. That was always my running joke when people ask me, like, "Oh, well, you prefer Nikon or Canon or this or that?" And uh, you know, I, luckily Sony has made their the same color as Canon, so I can keep this joke going. But it's like, would well, you like a black lens or do you like a beige lens? Because right. you know, like at, at the end of the day, like they're all very capable. Just you know, it's again, it's it's a tool, and it's how do you use it. Yep. Uh, so we we use all Canon gear. Uh, I have three bodies that I use uh, at a game, mainly so that you don't, I'm not trying to switch lenses on a camera body and, you know, it just makes it easier to grab another one to, to depending on what's happening. But, you know, I have all our three cameras. So we've made the full switch to the RF glass. And then honestly, like, I think I kind of just said it, but like, I look at it as, each lens is its own tool and it all depends on how you use it and thinking about what's the best thing for the moment uh you know typically game action you're using a 400 2.8 lens uh you know fast lens so you can get you know stop that action and all of that but you know then my other two bodies it just depends on what you know because again i have 81 of these games that we do every year so it's, I try to mix it up a little bit, but you know, the, the main stay would be a 24 to 70 and then a 70 to 200. Cause then you're, you're pretty covered through your zoom range there, but I'll swap out, you know, like, you know, to like a 15 to 35, depending if you know, if you got to run up and do, uh, you know, some general view of the stadium wide angle stuff, uh, just to show the whole pack stadium. And then, you know, the other thing is just playing around with some primes. So like an 85, one, eight or one, two, and then a 50, uh, one, eight, you know, just, just, it's, again, it's not something that you can just shoot game action with, but it's, that's where you can get some of those more quiet moments. And, you know, you can really play around with depth of field that way. And it just, it just gives a different look to what you're shooting than, you know, just everything at two, eight. Sure. Sure. And, and to, to kind of paint the picture of the day in the life, you know, people would say to me, oh, if you're Mitch, if you're shooting a game and it starts at seven, 
you must have to get there an hour before the game starts. And, I, you know, <laughs> we can sort of insert the joke there. So maybe share with uh, those who are listening, you know, if you have a seven o'clock game, which is a fairly typical uh, nighttime game start, uh, give an idea, if you would, like when, when would you get to the ballpark? What are the kind of things you're doing leading up to the game? And then if it does start at seven, assuming it's not extra innings, when do you typically get out of the ballpark just to kind of understand what a day in the life is for you? Yeah. So it it sort of varies depending if it's during the week or weekend, because uh, during the week, typically we'll get in anywhere to the office between 1030 and 11 because just because we have games there's other things going on other meetings other things to prepare for so uh and then using that time to then also edit you know if there's a game the night before editing that and then just handling whatever other requests come in uh internally or externally and so like that's a you know get in for that and then but typically we uh it's don't i don't cover uh, batting practice every day it's just depends you know as needed depending on if there's a new player or something going on that you know kind of dictates the, the need for that uh and if that's the case you know we'll you know I'll go over around probably about four is when they'll start to stretch and get out there for bp and all and then uh that'll go up until about 5 15 ish and then our bps over and then that's visitors bp and that's usually when i'll that's when i take the break of okay now i can eat dinner uh uh check in with all the uh the photographers that are covering the game just to you know kind of go over if there's anything special happening uh if there's any anything extra just you know making sure that i do my part too to keep everyone else informed of you know just what's going on and just also so i know who's there just so that you know uh if someone has a question i can answer it and then typically we'll go back down to the field around 6 15 ish or so for a seven o'clock game because between 6 15 and 6 30 is about when somewhere in that range the starting pitcher and catcher and all that will go out to warm up and then from 6 30 to like 6 40 is when the rest of the players start to come out and then we have you know pregame ceremonies all those types of things uh and then it leads into the game uh you know the fun thing is just sometimes we can have a two-hour game so waiting on one of those but maybe 215 now with the pitch clock uh you know probably average about three hours for a game uh, i'm thinking this past season which is is pretty good and then post game the, you know it all depends on you know what happened in the game but like we provide you know in game we're sending stuff to social as it's happening uh but post game what we'll do is we'll go through and kind of call through our selects from the game of what we liked and then uh just do a quick tone and crop on those to then provide to players because just like everyone else they all have social media and like to share stuff so we like to provide them with those after the game and so then you know sort of rinse and repeat that's 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 a normal day. And then, you know, for weekend games, it's like, if it's a seven o'clock Saturday game, like again, like I'm probably getting here somewhere in that four to four thirty range. So you've got, you know, you've essentially have a 12 hour day from the time you get there to the time you leave on a game day. That's about, about 10 30 to 10 30 or 11 to 11 or there thereabouts. So you, you figure that for the, for those of you counting at home, listening to this. So you've got the season starting usually that very first week of April uh, barring the postseason, you're done late September, then you catch your breath, and then pitchers and catchers report usually that second week of February. And so people can find you on the south of France, relaxing on your yacht between when the season ends <laughs> till the beginning oh, of yeah. February. So it's really what pretty much just reacquainting with your family and, uh, yes. and doing all the uh, – you know, cataloging and the uh, the preseason promotion stuff for the upcoming year, and then the New Year's there is is it almost like a blur of the off season? Uh, yeah, and that's a you know that's always the sort of the running joke because everyone you know it's always referred to as the off season, but it's the off season <laughs> for some people and not others. But you know, it, 
the, to to uh, to me the the big thing too is that it you know it goes back to just you know a normal nine to five Monday to Friday, uh, so it's it's really not bad. Uh, you know, there's it usually takes about honestly for whenever the season ends, it usually takes about a month to kind of finalize everything from the previous season whether it's finishing up editing or just requests that kind of thing and then again because it's the way the world has changed and uh with how everyone does everything is you know we're right into meetings on what do we want to do for next year what are you know uh what what can we plan for whether it's stories or longer form pieces on players or just things throughout the year and just you know the normal marketing stuff that goes with it you know because there's going to be tickets on sale again there's going to be other things that happen uh that we need to get ready for and then again it, like you said it just you blink and then it's spring training again and then you're right back into it so, you know, with all the changes uh, that you've seen over the past three or four years with, you know, really the explosion of social media and uh, many more resources dedicated to kind of, you know, people use that expression feeding the beast, but, you know, sort of staying up on all those different marketing outlets that various people are accessing, you know, where do you have a feeling for where you think, you know, will be three years from now? Do you have even, you know, a, a hint of, you know, what's next or what could be next as far as, you know, either the Orioles or baseball or pro sports teams, you know, going to the next, the, a next level of, uh, of using uh, video and stills to, to market the, the product on the field? You know, uh, I honestly, like, I, I'm, I'm not even sure what I could say to predict anything because, uh, I think the biggest the biggest change I think really that has happened has been in the last probably two to three years, and it's just across the board is that not just about the Orioles, but you know, say it in college sports everywhere is that everyone was very photo heavy, and then there's been the big like, oh, we can now leverage video in different ways, mm -hmm. and so I think it's just more of that sort of fine tuning that the video photo and then even like graphic design usage like that it's gonna it's it's more of that being a fine getting fine-tuned to a way that just works well for everyone like i i mean i made the joke earlier but you know who knows what in the next month what what social media platform might be out there that like that changes things you know like instagram was a big thing that changed things you know uh you know then when you know twitter and all that like and they they also as they change their algorithms they change what it gets pushed on the platform too and so it's more of you're kind of adapting as it goes along so it's you know i would say i i don't want to predict anything because I, I honestly i can't i can't wrap my head around what might be next because you know we've seen so much change in the last few years it feels like at least it's not that it's hitting a plateau and it's just going to flatline at, okay, this is where we're at, but I, I don't know if it's going to be as big of leaps and bounds as it has been. Yeah. I guess we'll, we'll find out together. Yeah. You know, uh, listening, I'm sure we've got many mothers and fathers and friends who, you know, they go out with their camera and they're shooting their son or daughter or friend, relative, et cetera, their little league game, their high school game, you know, whether it's baseball, it could be football or any other sport. So just sticking with baseball for the for the insight, what would be your suggestion to someone who wants to shoot their local little league or high school game? It could be just for their own enjoyment or it could be because they have a, a neighbor or a friend or, or a relative who's playing in the game. What kind of high level advice would you give for those people to try to, you know, improve and make the best images of, of a baseball game that they possibly can? Yeah. So the, I mean, the biggest thing is you just have to utilize the the camera that you have. Like, I mean, you know, I'll get chastised from some people, but like if all you have is your iPhone or you got your Android for those people like me that like to be the green check mark and everyone's text uh, message. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just, it's actually doing it. You know, you have to go out and you have to do it. But like, if you have a, you know, 
a actual either DSLR or mirrorless camera that you're using, the big thing is that you know you want to stop the action. So it's just making sure you have that higher of a shutter speed and whatever the lowest aperture you can. Uh, you know, I know with a lot of the kit lenses, some of the you know even with the longer zooms, like you're in that four five to five six somewhere range. It's just taking advantage of that. Uh, you know, the good thing is most of these. Uh, little league games and stuff there you know they're saturday morning sunday morning uh so you got decent light that you don't have to worry about you know super high S iso or, or anything like that uh but really it's just you know it's not that you're predicting what's going to happen but you know if you if your kid's playing baseball you kind of know how the game works so it's thinking like okay well if they you know if this person gets a hit is maybe i don't need a picture of the the guy running up the you know the kid running up the line and i can get something of you know my the next kid that's running down to score or something like that or it's looking at you know the the dugout to see like oh this is a good reaction but it's just really it's you know the cameras are at a point now that like they're the autofocus is even in the more consumer cameras are it's a pretty solid pretty quick uh so you don't have to worry about trying to do manual focus like, uh, you know, you can do that. But it's this, you know, the, the main thing of if you want to stop the action, you got to have a higher shutter speed, lower aperture. And then, you know, kind of you can cheat and just put it to auto ISO if you really want to. Uh, and then that takes one thing out of the equation. But I would just that that's the big thing is, uh, you know, and don't if everyone's standing in the same spot, maybe go up the line a little bit so you can get a little bit different angle, uh, you know, and just move around a little bit. Yeah, no, that's, that's super good advice. Well, you know, my hope, like I'm sure, like a lot of other uh, Marylanders is that the Orioles continue on the, the upper trajectory that, that they are. And uh, hopefully they get a world series championship and a ring. And then uh, along with that, I'll be looking forward to seeing your world championship ring when, when all that happens, that would be uh that would be a pretty cool day. How, what, what do you, what do you think that would mean to you? If the team, you know, was able to achieve that. And as their team photographer, you, you had a ring uh, acknowledging your contribution to the team and the championship. What would that mean? Just looking at that ring on your finger. I mean, it, 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 you, you think of it in the terms of like the year that it happened, which uh, is, is pretty neat and it you know it's kind of i think it's honestly hard to put into words what it would to mean uh you know for me like i grew up here uh you know i have i have pictures of me in front of the stadium as a kid while it was being built uh so you know it's sort of multiple levels of what it would mean and really feel to for that to happen you know like the thing that's wild is, you know, I've been doing this, this my 21st season and, you know, just looking at, if you go strictly by the numbers, this was the best team this year since I've been here. Uh, and not to say that the other teams weren't good teams, but it just, that's, it's, it's pretty wild to think that like, you know, you never know what the next year will hold. And so, you know, just, uh, I think this was a really, this year was a, a, sort of like a tease of okay this is what everyone should kind of come to expect soon and it just makes it it's exciting because you know Mitch as we talk a lot and you know the photo wells it's it's the the team having a winning team but you having these younger guys that just have fun as they're doing it it you know it makes my job easier because you know they're they're just you know it's exciting uh it, you know hopefully this time next year you know I you know, I'll be a little busy right now. <laughs> you, you and me both, you and me both. Well, Todd, uh, appreciate you joining us and, uh, proud to call you a friend. And I've always just really admired your work and I appreciate you taking some time to, uh, share your insights and your stories with the listeners. Thanks so much. Thanks Mitch. Appreciate you having me. Hope you enjoyed my talk with Todd. We definitely covered a lot of ground and, uh, the, uh, baseball season, not, too far away so that uh, hopefully whet the appetite of those of you listening who are baseball fans 
For people who like to find out what I have going on, feel free to check out probably my Instagram to get the latest and greatest of what I'm up to. That's Mitch Stringer Images. And then if you want to go online, you can go to MitchStringerImages.com, see what's uh, what's happening there. And I invite you to join us on our next episode. We do drop new episodes twice monthly on the 1st and on the 15th. So be sure to uh, subscribe and like and follow and all that good stuff so you get a notification when the new episodes drop and uh, you don't miss one. You can jump on board early and, and check those out. So until next time, I wish you great light. I wish you happy shooting and we'll talk again soon.